Alright. Alright, I'm back. Here's another field note. I did some uh, pretty in-depth in depth, in depth, uh, scouting around back uh, behind the field. Uh, now, Fred Candy had brought back uh, a sample of scat back to camp a couple days ago. And, you know, what was obvious in the little piece he did to bring back was grass and water shoot. Uh, water shoot is a, a water weed that grows by water or in the water, usually in marshy areas. We got it all along the creek bed back here. Um, with the other locations that where I found bear scat, bear scat, like I said, keep in mind, bear scat I've seen in several styles. Several, it comes in a variety of different textures uh, based on the diet of the, what the bear or bear has been eating throughout the day or week. Uh, keep in mind, bears use the bathroom very frequently, quite often. Um, I've seen several of bear scat back there. I've seen two piles of large bear scat with the grass, uh, the water root, grass root, whatever you call it, uh, with different vegetation mixed into it. I've also seen bear scat with um, uh, wood, sawdust, like shredded up looking wood, because they do eat into wood quite often, uh, especially mainly to get their bugs, grubs, etc. Um, and back there towards the bedding area, um, you keep in mind when I refer to the bedding area, I'm referring to the deer bedding area. Seen a lot of bear sign, bear tracks. I came across some water root, uh, whatever you, I just, you know, the, um, the vegetation that was found in the piece of bear scat that Fred Candy brought back. I've seen, I took a picture of it and I documented where you can see where something's been eaten at it. I did find tracks all around there and tracks were very clear and I took pictures of them. Bears, bear tracks everywhere. There's a number of deer tracks and bear tracks all throughout there. Deer tracks of all sizes. All right, however, when Elaine was back there, she said she saw something take off. And I concluded it was a bear. And I believe my conclusion was accurate. Um, based off the evidence I've been finding, there's a very active bear behind here. When I used to camp over here at the other spot, always had a bear activity. Found a lot of fresh bear signs. Even during the hunting season, I just found fresh bear signs. Bears is one thing I do specialize in. I know how to identify bear signs, their diets, their scat, their tracks, etc. Um... So yeah, the bear's been right here at camp, behind camp, down beyond. So have the uh, deer. Uh, I've seen a lot of fresh deer signs too. Um, so I want to make a, a correction on that, and I hope Fred didn't say nothing on his podcast, because you know I wanted to let him know, based off of my findings and my observations on the scat, because I found the, the whole portion um, more than once. So three portions that were all identical. Besides the other two that had wood in them. Well, the bear scat, all three of them that were identical with the same water shoot uh, vegetation in them. Uh, I've seen a number of seeds in them. So, yeah, the bear's been eating a lot of the vegetation. So, therefore, the scat that Fred Candy found was not Sasquatch. It was bear. Black bear. They eat. Black bears will run and follow the water sources, and they will eat the vegetation that is nearby. So with that being said, any questions of denial on what I found, I mean, I do apologize that Fred came to that conclusion um, based off of his findings, but for my findings, it's up to me, it be, me being a researcher and an investigator, I have to look into this. Because if I was to agree with him, I needed to find proof to agree with him just like anybody else in the field anybody can make a claim but it's based off of your research and your investigation based off of your hypothesis and your theories you gotta combine them together you gotta research them investigate them and find out show me proof that's what you're saying it is I have to do that for myself if I make a claim 
if my claims, if they're fact, I will state that they're fact. A lot of my claims are more or less opinions. But I research my opinions, and then when I turn them and be fact, it's because I did my homework. Just like any other one of you that are out there that are researching Sasquatch, an unclassified primate. <laughs> you have a large uh, abundance of other species among you. Are you forgetting them? Think about it. I have to research and understand the bears and the patterns of all the species. Because if I just went off of just guessing and went off of my imagination, if I was to let my imagination run wild, everything would be a Bigfoot. <laughs> Do I make sense? Am I making any sense at all to you? I'm not putting, I'm just trying to educate in a soft manner um, that I investigated. I did my research. I did my homework. That's what we're here for. That's what I'm here for. That's why the ECBRO is here. Someone needs to be the voice of the reason. Help me be that voice. Do you have doubt with what I'm saying? Question me. Question me, and I'll answer you. I invite you to question me Monday the 13th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time as I go and explain all my findings and screen sharing photos and I'll be discussing everything that's happened out here. That's what these uh, expeditions are about. They're all, it's a learning experience every time we're out here. It's not just looking for a Bigfoot sign, but you got to observe and take notice of what's out here that does exist. That is classified as what it is. So thank you again for watching my videos. Tell your friends about me. Let's learn. Let's get the awareness out there. Subscribe to this channel. Spread, share the links, do whatever is necessary to put the word out there. The ECBRO is coming to you. We're spreading out. I have very active members and active researchers who have been great reporting and sharing their findings with me. And I will be acknowledging them very soon publicly through an open podcast show. God bless. And subscribe to ECBRO98 right here on the YouTube channel. Check out me on Twitter as Daniel Benoit. Find me on Facebook and like us on Facebook, the ECBRO like page. Thank you. Last couple minutes, I've been listening to Bart Owls right behind camp. Um, I heard one in the distance sounding off, and then there was one much closer behind camp. And they were putting it on and off here for, like I said, probably a good two minutes, maybe three minutes or so. Um, I, I uh, when I had turned my, uh, as soon as I started hearing them, I started. Uh, Recording them with my audio recorder, which I do have that noted on there, you know, just recording. And I take note of hearing owls around here. I'm going to tell you why. And this is something I've learned even over in Fred Candy's area. Owls, when they start sounding off, um, it's a good sign. It is actually it's a sign that indicates other apex prey around, especially in the lower ground. And when I say apex predators, I'm actually going to refer to squatches in this case. Um, I'm expecting activity late tonight. Um, right now it's only 8 o'clock and there was sound, It's well it's 8.05 right now, but right about at 8 o'clock they were sounding off, communicating between each other. And um, actually I'm kind of glad to hear that. The whole week I've been here so far, that's the first time I've heard owls. And not just one, but now I heard two. They were community. And I wrote that down in my notes. And like I said, I recorded on the audio recorder. So that's awesome. So we're going to sit tight and um, cross our fingers. Because usually, majority of the time, the sound of owls triggers squatch activity. These are, you know, and I'm st stating this because this is from observations through the years. I've learned this. Um, and it's kind of, and I know it sounds crazy, especially if you're hearing this for the first time, something like this coming out of my mouth. But from my observation, the sound of owls communicating means squatch activity is going to happen. And, you know, it's happened on, you know, on a number of occasions. And you could basically almost guarantee it. 
So I, you can guarantee I will have my auto recorder out tonight. I'll be flurring. I'll be using my flurr around the area. But um, I'm gonna rely on my auto recorder to pick up any activity, vocals or anything. I'm crossing my fingers. So I uh, will see. But like I said, I'm glad to hear owls. All right, stand by. I was just getting ready to turn it in. I was turning off my outside lights, getting everything situated. And from out of nowhere, right over behind me towards the creek, I heard the loudest, hardest bang, like serious tree knock. Like it was taken out of the ground and banged against another tree. I know that sounds exaggerating, but I don't know how else to describe that bang. And it came from towards the creek, and then just beyond that patch of woods after the creek, you got the river. There's no camping over there. There's nobody over there. <laughs> they are that close. And it takes... That had to have been a big boy. That's a big boy with a hard, massive bang that I just heard from over, over in that direction behind me. That was like seriously hardcore. I mean, I'm getting tree knocks, very little vocals. I mean, tonight I haven't heard no vocals. Maybe a, a few distant coyotes. That's about it. With a hardcore tree knock like that, that's wow. Knowing that there's a big beast in the woods nearby, that's kind of exciting. I don't even feel scared about that. That's like something happened when you least expect it. No, I don't know. That's awesome. It's only about 10.30 at night. It's about... Yeah, close to 10.30 right now. Well, I got the audio audio recorder going. I hope the audio recorder picked that up. And if there's any activity behind where I got my tree, uh, my trailer camera at, it'd be awesome. So, I bet it was so hard. That might have came from over on the other ridge over there just on the other side of the river because it's all it's a big ridge up there so I just had to share that little bit of information with you that was awesome all right I'm gonna turn this off go in my tent the last two nights I've been hearing loud thumps across the uh, road every time I get in the in the tent I hear something so it's like they come around when I go when shut everything down so they can get active they're usually active when I'm around and out so let's see what happens ladies and gentlemen came over here there's a nice stream that runs through here um, I came over here to fill up my water uh, jugs and you know one thing I always look for because this is a hot spot right here serious hot spot right here I've gotten all kinds of tracks in here before. I found some awesome tracks, big and small, a lot of small. Um, I've had a rock thrown. Um, this is the same section of woods where we had an encounter just a little further down uh, back in 2014. Um, this is also the area where I had a personal encounter where the subject was very large. It was uh, about 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. I was camped actually directly across from camp. When I walked out of the road, uh, that's where I shine my spotlight in here and you can hear a very large subject walking away. Well, apart from that, right now, when I was in here earlier, I could not help but notice the impressions and the tracks I was finding. And apparently, there's a game trail right here. Apparently the subjects were walking along from here because 
I can show you impressions. There's impressions all through here, left and right. Even right here, there's something here, there's something there, there's something all well, outstanding right there. Right here and here, I, I powdered the tracks. This is kind of odd how it goes from here to here to here, and then one right there. I must be missing one somewhere because I cannot, I mean, it looks like there's something there, but not as impressed as what I'm showing you right here. Looks like our subjects are I found all my other tracks. Um, I can show you a little bit closer on these tracks right here. I had to, I had to remove some of the debris, the leaf litter, the pine litter, to show you details. This one and this one here, they both show toes. I'm more impressed with this one right here. That's why I got, I came back, came all the way back up here to get my, uh, you know, to get my plaster up here and set. I just got, I had to go get more water just to do all this. I'm not going to have enough to do. Um, I very much doubt it, but I'm definitely going to go after this one here. I, this is something I started doing. Whenever I find a trackway, I start powdering it. I'll powder and dust it. That way I can show the details. I can show you what I'm looking at. But a lot of times, I could tell you, hey, I'm looking at a trackway. Through the camera, you're not going to see it. But this is one way you can see it right here. By taking a little bit of the powder, or the plaster, dry powder, and shaking it very lightly just to show the tracks. You don't have to get crazy with it. And right through here. And you can follow the game trail right here. Look at this. Look at this. Because something stepped right there. Can we some of this away? Look at this. That's sunk in pretty deep right there. And I'm sure if we keep going, we might find more. You can see where something stepped there. It looks like we got bear scat right No, might be old bear scat right there too. But I'm showing you, these are not bears. So I know what's in these woods and I know what was here before. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and get busy, get started on this plaster, mixing it up. Um, of course, I always take pictures if I if I do a track or you know plaster a track. I I'll do a before and after picture. So stay tuned. All right, this is awesome. This is just over behind camp, just on the other side of the creek, where I heard something in distress yesterday. All right, uh, I'm gonna inform you, or if you're just watching this video and didn't watch and listen to the uh, other ones. Um, back here is where we've been finding the large tracks. The other large tracks is across the road on the other side. And been finding some younger, smaller tracks right here. And I powdered them to show you the tracks again. This is this is the cluster I found right here. And if you look carefully, they're in it. But I don't know if I brought enough plaster to do all of them. Right here, we got a right foot, left foot, right foot, and a left foot. Okay, so I just want to show you this little cluster right here. These here were pretty obvious ones. Impressions with the toes, they all have toes in them, and they're all pretty consistent in the same size. So, I had to share this little bit of information with you. I'm going to take a picture. Uh, my plaster and everything's in my backpack. And this is also the same area where I had a buck that was blowing at me. You could hear, kept, he kept doing it. This is the area, I know that during the hunting season, there's a big buck that works this area. And if you listen very carefully, the sound of the river is flowing over there, which uh, I'm going to have to probably go over there to get my water. Uh, all right, stay cash. tuned. I was able to get two of them done. Well, that one there is going to be a little thinner. I had a little bit left over, and I took a chance and did that one there. Um, yeah, I think it might come up. There, there's still setting up another 10 more minutes, roughly. 10 more minutes, they should be good to go. They're, I mean, they're pretty much 
there now, but 10 more minutes or I'll feel more comfortable trying to take them up. So, I'm happy. This is awesome. Now, what I heard last night, I played the recording to Fred Candy when he came by earlier. And uh, he says it sounds exactly what me and him heard uh, across camp. Uh, later part of this past year which we believe it was a juvenile squatch well it sounded like it came from this area and I've been searching this whole area these are the smallest tracks I found I mean if this is a juvenile around here I mean if a young one I don't think they're heavy enough to really leave impressions I mean, depends on the soil, you know, it all depends on soil, where they were. I see tons of de uh, deer tracks, I saw a few more bear tracks, then I saw, found these. There's more. They love this area, it's thick, well, they're well hidden, the deer are in here, the grouse are in here, the river's right there just over there so perfect habitat so there you go I'm proud of what I found and I'm proud of what I'm collecting 